get started. Okie dokie. With more art to do. Oh, wrong thing. <sighs> okay. Uh, this is a multiply layer. Nope. This was set up, so hopefully we'll be able to do everything the normal way. Look a little funky, we'll find out. Well, it's okay. Okay. Oh, this is gonna be a pain in the butt to try and shade, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. Okay. Let's try this. This one, alright? Yeah. Okie dokie. Maybe it won't be so bad if we uh, just pop our way around like this and then fill it in. We have to have some kind of shade on these guys. Is, okay, we're just gonna do um, these two angles, I think. I hope. <sighs> Excuse me. Awesome. I hope everybody's doing okay as well. And now I have to do this background shading. Blah! Blah! Oh, I'm gonna make this look confusing. I'm like, good job, me. You made it look confusing. Oh, Escherich. And at least this kind of a, at least multiplayer, multiplayer, <laughs> multiply layer. Okay, degree. Let me just actually go a little faster than I'm thinking. We'll find out. Finished all of the uh, what you who's the um, base colors for the characters, but far enough that I can do this. Hello, thank you for coming. I am getting into shading the backgrounds. Oh no, they're crazy, but they gotta be done. Hopefully this will look halfway decent by the time I'm done. It's all supposed to be weird and funky. Just woke up. Good morning. So as Missile would say, I just want to say, welcome! I woke up at 7. I'm not very good at sleeping in anymore. I'm too old to sleep in. No. I have stuff I have to do, so I can't sleep in. Here's early morning wake up stream. It's going okay so far. I'm gonna try and save off in case Photoshop is stupid, which it has been in the past. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Threw, just threw down a bunch of uh, lines on perspective grids. It's not clear sometimes how the perspective goes. It's just kind of weird. It's just kind of weird. Hopefully 
do like kind of a soft glow in the back there too. Not one thing at a time. Yeah. I can't help it. I wake up pretty early. Even if I don't mean to. Like, even today I'm like, I set my alarm for 7. And I woke up like before 6 and I'm like, okay. But better that and, you know, being like, oh, I have more time for sleep than the opposite. I guess we'll, in general, not with this. Nah. Why is it always bumping to like a bajillion things like that? But maybe the shading will go quickly. I guess we'll find out. Gotta do it one way or another. I should make the door darker because they're coming from a dark spot into a light spot. Yeah, I'm weird as an artist because I'm an early bird. I don't like staying up too late, but I do prefer to get up early. That's just how it is. This stuff is. I'm gonna go and shade it in. I'm gonna make little swatches all flat because they're like crows. Corvids. Phone oh, always blooping at me. Man, I got another one of those like I think they're scams of some some sort like it looks like a wrong number kind of thing only this time it was like ah, i'm screaming at you i'm gonna come kick your ass and i'm like i don't know who you are goodbye you've been blocked or deleted it's hard to block numbers on this thing either way but we did this is the second time i've gotten one of those stop texting me i'm gonna kick your ass thing and i'm like i have not texted you once you are a liar. Hello, hello. Thank you for coming. Hello, it's going okay. Except for the weird text I got this morning. Looks like it's going to get warm again until I have to start turning on my air conditioner. And by warm, I mean back in the 80s, which is not the hottest, but it is if you're here and there's no air conditioning. <laughs> House insurance is like rub salt in the wound. It was so funny. Um, let's see. Are we getting all that? Okay, yeah. Make sure. Oh, wait. I just realized. I didn't do that quite correctly. I'll make sure I do that. Okay. Everybody's doing all right. He's doing his scam work. But yeah, once when I was, um, back when I actually worked in a studio, we were on Ponies, um, one of the other storyboard artists in the room suddenly got one of those, um, those scams that's like they're calling from the IRS or the Canadian equivalent of the IRS, and they're like, you haven't paid your taxes, we're gonna send the police after you, kind of thing. Um, she got one of those and clearly could tell that it was a scam going on. 
and was basically sassing the guy back. And she's like, oh, you're going to send the police after me? Okay, I'm home right now. Come send the police after me. Come at me with your police. <laughs> and, like, we're all just sitting here in the in the workroom, just mouths agape, like, what's going on? Who is she talking to? Basically taunting these people. Yeah, send your, your police, bitch. <laughs> It was really funny, actually. So yeah, if you ever get a call from the IRS and they're like, you owe us money, uh, no you don't. The IRS will never call you. They will send you letters. If somebody calls you saying they're from the IRS and that you have to wire money right away and you have to do it through, like, you know, wire, wire money services, that's a scam. They can't send the police to you because they're not real. Yeah, it was just funny that happening in, in real time and us all just kind of watching like, <gasps> scandal, scammy scandal. No, no, that's up there. Scammers are everywhere. It's such a pain in the butt, too, honestly. I can't even, like, answer the phone anymore unless it's like, oh, that's clearly from mom. I know who's calling. Like, like the other day, I had a package that was supposed to be delivered, and they called me because I didn't recognize the number. I didn't pick it up. And it wasn't until they actually left a message saying, we're here with your package. I'm like, okay, I can actually call back. It would have saved everybody time if I'd been able to just talk to them first, but I couldn't. So I was like, I don't recognize that number. It might be a scammer. I don't know. <laughs> He's sexy. He hung up. <laughs> it's just really frustrating how there's like zero regulation on that kind of thing. Like, the regulatory bodies that could have helped with this were just like, nope, sorry, you're on your own. So now one of our major methods of communication is just overrun with scams. To the point of being almost unusable. Not great. Nope. Good. Yeah. Apparently they have a quite a number of kidnapping scams that run here. And I saw the, I read, or I didn't read, I listened to a podcast on the freakiest thing the other day that, you know, you know, like, you know how they have kidnapping scams where they're like, they pretend that they have, you know, your family member and you have to pay them a bunch of money sort of thing when they don't actually um well with the power of AI you know they scrape people's voices so they've been doing these scams where um oops, I forgot that thing there been doing these scams where basically you know they run the kidnapping scam but they also use AI to fake somebody's voice the voice of like your loved one so that makes the scam sound legit and it's not great. Yeah, they have ki they do have kidnapping scams. You have to watch out for those. I think that's probably something they're gonna you know tell a, a do with an adult number more. But yeah, basically it's scams where they call you and pretend that they've kidnapped like somebody you know that you have to pay them a bunch of money in order to release them. And with this AI stuff now, they're doing it so that they can fake your, your friend or your family member's voice to make it sound like they're kidnapped. But it's not real. Like I'm trying to, you know, be like, okay, yeah, yeah, it can be used for some good things, but so far I'm like, so, I'm like, okay, so far it's been used for theft and scams. When is it going to be used for something useful? 
Please. yet to see a, a use of this large language model learning machine learning th thing that I'm not like, no, that kind of sucks. <laughs> like, why do we have that? This causes more problems, doesn't solve any problems. Where's the problem solving versions? Yeah, people will go to a lot of, a lot of, um, effort to steal money. It's pretty cruddy. What's really annoying is that they especially will, like, target people that they know are vulnerable. I remember I was way back in the day, I was working in this um, travel agency office, a small little travel agency, and um, where's the sock brush? There it is. A small little travel agency, and the owner there um, had an elderly parent of some kind who was, you know, not quite really cog you know, cognizant anymore. And because of that, she was being targeted by people who scam the elderly. Like, if you are an elderly person and, like, your cognizance is kind of eh, um, become an instant target for people basically scamming you out of your life savings because, you know, you'll hear some nice person on the phone and be like, you have to send us money, and you'll be like, oh, okay, I guess I gotta send money. And, uh, you'll do it. And it gets to the point where basically your, you know, family members have to step in and take control of your money for you. Why one on the other race? And so the person I was working for was dealing with that and getting extremely angry because the scammers clearly had found a good target with his parent and were just trying to wring every cent out of her. It was just awful. Yeah, like, you, there's some things where, like, you know, if you have a family member who's passed and the last thing you have of their voice is, like, a, um, a voice message or something, that's useful. Another reason Twitter is sucking, because sometimes they're, they were like, we're going to get rid of, um, you know, accounts that haven't been used in a while. It's like, sometimes accounts that haven't been used in a while have, have, are that way because, like, the person died. And their loved ones want that account around. It's like, okay, here's the, here's their messages. Here's something I can remember them by. And there's like no appeals process for this. It's just so stupid. Yeah, like I, I don't know. It's there's all kinds of I, I don't know. Like if I was in a situation I'm like, can you make an AI voice after I die? I'm like, I wouldn't want that. But it's grief is a weird thing, and it's really hard to you know say to people, well, you can't do it that way, you know. I'm not sure what the solution is to that. Back down to this. Use the Norton app. So stupid. And everybody's like, no, we're not calling it that. We're just going to call it Twitter. Yes, Elon, just throw away the extremely recognizable brand name. Or a letter. <laughs> I'm sure corporations love that. Alright, I need I need like a bright green to add here for the acid, so let's do that. Green acid. We're going right into the scary territory here. That. Add that to this. I wonder if maybe that's too bright. Is it too bright? Maybe I should take it off the gamut warning. Only web colors. There we go. Only web colors in the building. There we go. It's a little bit off the brightness. Hey. Look at all these rooftop acid pools. <laughs> if we tell, like, <laughs> tell Elon that X represents non-binary people, he'll get rid of it. <laughs> Probably. 
<laughs> people, people keep telling him, like, Elon, people associate that with, like, porn. And he's like, no, people associate it with, like, finding treasure. I'm like, not on the internet they don't. <laughs> like, big dummy. Alright. Acid, 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 acid. It represents Xehanort. Taking over your body. Yeah, I mean, obviously they do, but like, um, I'm thinking more about advertisers, people who want to, what, what the heck happened there? Um, people who want to, you know, put their brands on Twitter, because that's where a lot of people are. Uh, that kind of thing is not very, um, appealing to advertisers, not that it has been for a while. Maybe who cares what advertisers think? Okay. We will take care of character stuff later, but... Yay! Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want, want to do one more thing. I want that one to be shaded then. There we go. You know what? I'll do one more thing. I'm gonna do a little bit of a. Let's add a little bit of depth around here. Mm -hmm. I'm turn on multiply again because everybody loves multiply layers. I'm kind of in the same boat. I'm like, oh, I gotta work on all these comics and stuff. And I've just been really busy with work. I've only got so many hours in the day I can draw. At least I can do it now. But yeah, work's been keeping me pretty busy. This has been a busy, busy episode I've been working on. Oops. Get out of here, Cap Clock. That sucks. I'm like, I have stuff I want to draw. I have no time for it. Ah! if I'm lucky I'll um, have a little bit of a break week coming up I can maybe hopefully get at least this comic done by but um let's see I'm really hoping that whatever show I go on to next won't be quite as intensive in terms of schedule <gasps> yay drawn everybody drawn good luck It always is rough, and it's like, I want to draw, I don't have time for it, no! Especially since it's like, okay, I'll stop to draw for my job, so I better do that. What's going on with it? Yeah. What's going on with 
with the lines here? It's a mystery. Mostly just me being like, we threw out a bunch of lines and perspective grids. Wee! At least Pro is very good for that. This is like, I don't know what a skyscraper is, but it's weird. Thank you! I'm glad it inspired you to get into drawing. Keep going at it. It's worthwhile, no matter what you're doing it for. Whether it's for something you want to share, or just for yourself. I think it's a good use of time. Let's see. So, you are welcome. I'm glad I got you drawn. That's a good thing to hear. It's fun being able to make whatever you want. That's why I don't get that AI stuff. It's like, why would you want a robot to do that for you? It's like that saying, I made a robot that eats ice cream for you. It's like, okay, why would I want that? <laughs> that sounds like the opposite of fun. I'm doing this because I like doing it. Because it feels, feels good. Physically, mentally. So yeah, I'm glad you're drawn. I'm glad I got you to start drawing. Or whatever are you doing. There's lots of different ways. You can paint, you can sculpt, you know, fabric arts. There's all kinds of things. Hello, hello, thank you for coming. I, I, I got that um, Undertale cross stitch book. I should try and do more of those. Those were fun. I, I like I did a little Asriel. Um, I didn't get super far aside from that. Um, or a little kid Asriel. Um, I think I need more thread basically in order to do it. Oh, Lancers! Coming. Good luck with work. Nice, nice. I should do also do more traditional stuff sometimes. I'm so used to doing stuff digitally. When I whenever I get to traditional, I'm like, oh, I haven't done this in so long. Does this look good? I don't know. I can't undo it, so it'll have to do it as I want. Lancer Evo. That makes sense. <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of car I'll get whenever I get a new car. I don't want to get one for a while. I'm happy with the car I have now, especially since I don't have to use it that often. But, um, Eventually, someday I'll have to get a new car. I don't know what kind I'll get. Lancer is the knight confirmed. I'm kidding. I don't think Lancer is the knight. I don't think Chris is the knight either. Yeah, that's probably, I imagine not. I'm joking. I'm making jokies. I didn't put a shadow under, okay. No, this needs to be a point of thing. No shadows under, um, no shadows under Ralse. That's a plot thing. So I keep forgetting, because I'm like, I gotta put a shadow under the thing. Wait, no, no shadows under, under Ralsei. 
Oh, I feel old too. <laughs> I feel old. Okay. Did I do that okay? Hope so. Time mage. I guess she is mostly a snow mage. It's no problem. are going much faster than I thought they would. That's a plus for me. Yeah. I thought these would take longer. Ah, Disgaea. I think I had some friends that were into that. I've never played it myself. Run, Noel, run! She do ice spells. Okay. And we'll do Balitad. I said Balitad. I wish I had time to get into all those big games like Disgaea and Fire Emblem and Tales of and etc cetera, etc cetera, but I just don't have the time for that. There's so many. Yeah, the really big RPGs like that. I'm sure they're fun. Uh, that's the problem with getting old, is you're like, I don't have time for anything, I have to do the dishes. <laughs> Stupid. Nope, and it's time for my break, as soon as I finish this. <laughs> Add time, which means it's break time. Time to stretch. <clears throat> break my water. Huh, interesting. <laughs> that would be interesting. Mm, okay, let's stretch. That would be an interesting fic. Okay. Ugh, air feels dry on my throat. At some point I'll have to get my orange juice. Song is this song? It's very quiet. Oh, that's why it's quiet. Okay, it'll get louder. Stretchy, stretchy. I guess that makes sense.
Fictional friend fix. Hmm, interesting. Oh, I want to be a prison mage. Sounds fun. Yeah, I do. I do want to see like a. I think it'd be really cool if we had a situation in the future in game where we actually get to have Chris directly address people and not just through not just through the um, like you know kind of vague hints of hints of that we get like we know they're speaking in the game but we don't actually get to hear exactly what they're saying and I'd like to have a moment where we get to hear what they say we should uh, do that too. Yeah, that could make for something interesting. Thick wise. It's always very fun to have that kind of fourth wall breaking situation where the characters are aware that they are fiction and they're like, wait a minute. I have no say in this. Very, uh, animal man kind of thing going on. The amp endings can be hard. Alright, we're on to page three. Oh, wait a minute. I realized I forgot the acid pits on page two. So, I'm going to go back and do this real quick. It won't take long. Yes, I have this whole thing here for a reason. Just, oh. Also forgot the shadows under Noel and the other creatures there, so I gotta get those. Yeah, that's hard part. You can figure it out though. Who can do it? I just find the relationship between the player and uh, Chris to be a very interesting aspect of the game. I'm excited to see how it develops. Alright, on to page three. Like, I scream ice at your face. You have been ice screamed. I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Yeah, wear wires. So hello, hello, thank you for coming. So I'm curious if people can, uh, can identify the other creatures that um, are chasing her here. A little hard to come up with some of these because I'm like, man, they already look really cool in the game though. They've already got such great kind of creepy designs. Uh, no, I haven't seen that. That sounds silly. I mean, Wonder Bolts is My Little Pony. That's a very recognizable uh, franchise. <laughs> I don't know how you wouldn't get that. Like Xana's monsters. Yeah, like Where Wires already has such a great design. They look so cool. 
Okay. It's like, oh, they, they're frozen. Ropey guys. I'm popping out to get ya. like a team name. It'd be kind of weird if just the male members had a different name. Is my guess. French animated series? Like little pterodactyl guys, as opposed to kind of werewolfish guys. Nope, no. Nope. Oh, that's right. Do that. Oh man, I hate it. I selected the wrong thing. I gotta go back and fix it. the wrong edges. It's the wrong trousers. Grown into the wrong trousers. Oh, that's fun. Oh, sheesh, I haven't been on DeviantArt in forever. I kind of abandoned it. Sorry, DeviantArt. Can't keep up with that many things. I wish I could. I really should make like a link tree or something that has all my various socials on it. Let's see. Yeah, there's probably some good Undertale Delta Room comics on DeviantArt. Films have a different basis for what they consider okay for kids. An in interesting example of acceptable and unacceptable cultural norms. I haven't seen that one. I fi I finally caught up with um, Hand Place right when it ended. So yay! I'm glad I finally read it all instead of just watching dubs. Um, to catch up with unexpected guests and insomnia, I guess. Let's see what else other AUs I need to catch up with. Waha! More MLP fans! Ha ha ha! Enjoy the poems! Yeah, I'm always behind on comic series. I've been trying to catch up. 
I also caught up with Inverted Fate. I think that's on hiatus right now. And what else have I caught up on? Yeah, there's a lot I haven't read, and it's like, okay, what can I spend my time reading kind of thing? I only have so many hours in the day. All right, we're going to have to go back over here later with, like, um, something in the color department because it's supposed to be, like, bubbly. I'll do that later. Yes, Handblades ended. It just ended. It ran for, like, I don't know what, seven years or something? Crazy amount of time. Yeah, it, it is done. It is completified. Mostly I'm just like, oh dang, it's really nice to see people actually, you know, finish their projects. It's really hard for people to do that. So, it is a big accomplishment to finish something that long. Oh, I'm gonna have to go back over this and uh, erase some of these lines, I think. Yeah, I don't think I've seen much of Gaster's Great Escape. And, uh, I know people are always like, when is there more Over the Void? When is there more Undertale or whatever? And it's like, dude, if they don't work on those again, you know, it's fine. This stuff is made for free. And it's really hard to maintain something that long. Something that big and long over that period of time. Especially if you're, it's not your job. So... People need to not rag on other creators if they decide to not finish something. Like, it sucks when that happens, for sure. But that is the inherent risk you take with free content. <laughs> I don't know, you just do it. I, I, I am extremely stubborn. <laughs> and uh, I don't have other adult responsibilities like kids so I um I've been able to manage it but for a lot of people like it's hard finishing those kinds of big projects especially if you've got other responsibilities going on um especially work or family responsibilities like that's usually the first thing that gives is your personal project like, heck, even with this, I'm like, I'm not finishing this as fast as I would like to because just regular work and regular adult life is like, nope, too much of that. Or even just a little more of that than I usually have. It's enough to slow me down. Ain't nothing wrong with kids if that's what you want. But at least for myself, I'm like, okay, I have realized I don't want kids. I want to work on my projects. It would be extremely unfair to any kids I have if I was like, well, I had you, but I don't actually want to spend the time that you're supposed to spend on kids raising them. That's kind of the whole point is that you had to spend time raising them. And, uh, if I'm not going to do that, then I shouldn't create a whole nother person, <laughs> you know? I'm just thankful that my parents aren't too upset about that. You know, they want grandkids or whatever, but I'm like, sorry, you're not going to get grandkids from me or my other brother who's gay. But we do have one brother who's straight. And he's probably the best option for grandkids at this point. <coughs> I do like Bluey. That was a good show. I gotta see more of it when it's out. So somebody sent me an <coughs> sorry about that. Poor throat. Acid guys. Ugh. I gotta add bubbles onto that other panel later. Okay. We're making decent progress with the backgrounds here. I'm happy about that. I thought it would take a lot longer. <coughs> Sorry about that. I have, like,
like a mini wheat or something this morning, maybe. They're getting back to me. But mini wheat are supposed to be good for you. They're full of fiber. One-third of kids is grandchild liable. I mean, my other brothers could potentially adopt, but they're only just now finally going to get married, which, thank goodness, should have done that a while ago. I think that's going to happen in August. So, yeah, I'm happy that they're fi finally doing it. <laughs> Okay. That. Now I've got to do a little bit of erasing. Yeah, I can see my youngest brother having kids someday. I think he. I think that's the kind of thing he would like to do. Which is good. And also the his current girlfriend is a very nice young woman. So I'm glad that he picked or was picked by someone who's very sweet. Sweet and sweet and down to earth. Good stuff. I feel lucky that n none of my siblings are, you know, you know, sometimes people have siblings where it's just like, ugh, my sibling is blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, my siblings are cool. They are well-adjusted, chill, talented, talented young men. So, yay! And that's all fine. Com comics is seriously like, it's so much work. It's so much work. Yeah, no, it, it, it tend to all, uh, queer people tend to bloom together, so two, two out of three of us kids were queer <laughs> of some kind. <laughs> Let's see, do I need any of that shading stuff? Might be okay without it on this page. Mm. Maybe I can do a little bit on that one, actually. That's good. I'm trying to think of a hat. I think I have um, also like one other gay cousin or queer cousin. I'm, yeah, I have one other queer cousin at least. But I think most of the queer kids ended up in um, not my family. <laughs> But it's not just our family. Multiply. Now we can do a little bit around here too, but actually now I think that. Just a bit. I like having this kind of soft edges to stuff. That's cool. Congrats. It's nice to get that acknowledgement. I've actually never posted on AO3. By the time AO3 came around, I kind of stopped writing fanfiction. I'd stuck mostly with art and comics. I just ended up imagining stuff visually. Alright, on to page four! We're going for it! I appreciate the fact these backgrounds are going faster than I thought they would. Kira and Toriel had an affair. Oh, that's the opposite. Usually people have it where it's um, uh, Rudy and Asgore have an affair. Well, it'd be 
Beauty and the Beast references. Well, you know, it's your character, so you can do what you want with it. It can be ambiguous or not. Honestly, have no clue if Toby Webb would do anything with the idea of like a Rudy and Asgore being in a relationship. But I think it'd be kind of funny if, um, funny if he did. Although I don't want it to be like, oh, Toriel divorced him because of an affair. I, I think Toriel divorced him because of something that happened with Des and him being on the force. That is my assumption. We roped a reindeer. Yeah, Rudy's still married. Uh, th there's a bit of a, not joke, but kind of like a, hmm, will they, won't they thing of like that Rudy and Asgore have a thing for each other. Just because some of the ways they're described, how they interact is a li little bit on the, on the gay side. And also, um, stuff from like the Undertale uh, alarm clock dialogue, the winter winter alarm clock, where Asgore talks about Rudy. So. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know how... It's, it's hard to say right now, like, how all of the town would react to, like, queer couples if they... If that's just not a thing with monsters, or if it is, and we just don't know it. It's hard to say right now. At least not, at least not that Rudy's okay with it. Say it or no. Rudy is. Rudy knows that Noel likes Susie and is fine with that and encourages it. So we know that Rudy's okay with it. We don't know how Carol would feel. Well, we don't know her name is Carol even, but honestly, I'm just assuming that it is Carol because that's a Christmas name. And uh, we know it starts with C, or we st strongly suspect it starts with C. Now that would be an interesting fic, honestly. You hurt my daughter, I'll kick your ass. Susie's like, huh? Mommy? She go chomp. Help me. Kind of wonder if I should, uh, let's see. If I should, because I, I know there's a few more pages where I didn't do the character, um, stuff yet, so maybe I should. I don't know if I should go back and do those right now, or if I should just focus on doing backgrounds today. I appreciate the fact that I'm getting through these quickly. At least quicker than I anticipated. Characters will probably take longer, because they always do. Gotta do all the funky stuff around their long hair. Susie, your hair's too long still. But yeah, that does sound interesting for a fic. Probably something not often explored. Oh, that stinks. Okay, um... Chris, do a command! Susie, chomp! Hulk, smash. I actually want to 
draw them and go for it. You can draw what you want. That's the joys of art. stuff but we can do shadows right now yeah like it can be interesting like people always you know tend to like moralize kind of characters like oh I can't like this character because they're evil or whatever it's like no they can find interesting things about these characters Even if they're not people that you personally would like. Oh, it's stretch time already. Stretch time goes fast. Okay, here we go. Back to stretch time. Back to stretch time. Here we go. I think I'm gonna have the wear wires have like acid glowing limbs and tongues and all that. Oh, scary! Oh, scary! That's why I need to stretch. Listen to your doctor. Don't want to ruin your hand. Gotta take care of it. Don't be like me. Take care of your body. If you don't schedule maintenance, your body will schedule it for you. That's the truth. That's why I do constant maintenance. Constant vigilance maintenance. Oh yeah, I'm I'm just stretching. Doing my last stretches. Whew. I really do need to drink more water. Oh, are you getting a wrist brace? Yeah, I had to use those before. It's not quite a cast, it's just designed to make sure you don't, like, put your hand in bad positions. Alright, be right back for one more stretch. One more. Yeah, if you want to draw scenes like that, then go for it. Here I come. And yeah, that's kind kind of what I what I had too. They're like um, they're braces with um, uh, kind of like a. Not, not exactly a splint, but like a, you know, a sharp object in them, or a straight object in them. Again, designed to um, kind of just keep your hand in a certain position. Some people wear them like all the time when drawing. I do not, because I found I could not draw the way I wanted to while wearing those things. Nope, I just realized I forgot something over there. 
Yeah, my issue was um, nerve stuff. Which also affected the muscles, but it was largely the nerves. The nerve of these nerves! The nerve of them! They're gonna get drag her into the acid if she's not careful. Is that everything on that end? I need the acid stuff, so we'll do that. Hello, hello, thank you for coming. I am currently working on Eldritch Rune, this Delta Rune AU. Um, doing a comic for that. And I'm coloring in some backgrounds. By coloring, I mostly mean shading. I do not have the time to do full color, sadly. Color is just a very time-consuming prospect. It takes, like, you do, draw a comic and, you know, it takes a good amount of time, and color, unfortunately, just triples that amount of time. So, shading is what we're doing. But we're shading on backgrounds right now. And we'll go back and do the characters later. Luckily, the backgrounds are going quicker than I thought they would. <laughs> Only when I want goosebumps. Want more. Yeah, I, I would get that feeling in my in my hands too. I get like this tingling feeling sometimes. And ugh, man, that was so upsetting when I had that the first time. It really freaked me out. Okay. Do thing down there. Ah, yes, the music for both is amazing. I would definitely recommend playing Delta Room. It is super fun. It's a great game. So, if you haven't played it yet, this is probably going to be very confusing. Because <laughs> this isn't even what the characters look like. This is a vastly different AU than what they actually are. They are not giant monsters regularly. They are usually ordinary teens. This is just a very different universe. Um, where's my rust? Rust bucket. Oh, it's all good, it's all good. I don't mind people going on. It's just fun to draw a big scary monster. But yeah, would definitely recommend playing Delta Rune if you haven't. It's really good. It's super fun. Although it's not all out yet. We are waiting for future chapters, which I'm guessing are probably we're probably gonna get those uh, next year. Let's see. Yeah, obviously finish Undertale too first, because that is also an excellent game. Well, I've never played the Genocide Group. I've only played. Neutral and pacifist. Obviously, I've watched it, but I haven't played it. Yeah, yeah. Miss, miss. Computer, stop making funky noises. I'm not sure I save often. That is another nice thing about uh, having to get up on. Um, Every half hour to stretches, I'm guaranteed to save at least every half hour. Not more often than that, because I don't like losing time. No! That's not a break, because you're using your wrist for something else. you got to not use your wrist for a break. It's hard, because most of the things I do in my life involve using my wrist. That's why I had to give up that one uh, mobile game I really liked, which was making me sad, because it was... It was making my wrist problems worse. And I was like, well, I can't play this anymore. It's really making me feel bad. I don't know. Up to you. Whatever you want to do. Okay, is that the only one that we had it at? Yeah. Alright, we can do a few more 
shaking spots. I'm sure you'll think of something. Ugh, more water. Also orange juice next time. It'd be really nice if we can get through all the backgrounds today, but I'm not sure if that's possible or not. Yeah, hello. 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 Ah, what are you doing? There we go. Man, my hotkeys were not coming through. Collecting dragon slappy bird. Oh, I suck at spelling too. Especially on um, the way my keyboard is positioned is not super great for typing. I feel like I have to redo stuff a lot. Alright, I think backgrounds are done for this. We'll have to go back and do characters later. Let's move on to page 5 out of 10. Yeah, that, I gotta watch out for games like that because I love little collectible things. At least Pokemon Go makes me go outside for it. But I'm like, I want to collect all the creatures. I gotta watch out. I love me some puzzle games too. to the rescue yeah if it's repetitive tapping that's not good because that's a repetitive motion which is hard on your wrists not great that's why I had to give up the mobile game that I was playing too because I was like oh no this is really bad on my wrist it makes me feel bad no Yeah, Chris definitely seems the sort to be like, I don't really want to hang around humans. They're weird. I don't get them. I don't know why they are that way, but they are that way. Maybe someday we will learn the reason. But I don't know. I'm putting these in the right place because I don't know if I am. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm bad. I'm not sure it happened why the background lines are so low here, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. Suze is in a Pantene Pro V commercial. Because you're worth it too. Oh, yeah. Gotta take care of yourself. Make sure you take drawing breaks. That's why I take breaks. So that don't injure myself further. It's not fun to be injured. In fact, it sucks. Yeah, honestly, it's fine to do. <coughs> excuse me. It's fine to do like more than one drawing or whatever. It's just a matter of okay, how far are you pushing yourself? 
Are you making sure to do other things? Are you taking breaks? Are you stretching? All that goodness. Just take care of yourself. That's all you need to do. Don't overwork, basically. <laughs> Wrong commercial. That's not Pantene Pro V. I kind of wish I had other hobbies that were a bit more physical, but I'm not very good at that. All my hobbies involve sitting at the computer. I'm sorry, body. Yeah. Oh, that's a problem. Why? At least I have Pokemon Go. Make, makes me sit up and go outside. Okay, I did something. I put something there. Like right there. I wish I was more physical, but um, I'm not very. Maybe I can find something. Aside from just walking around where I enjoy being physical and outdoors. So I know it's good for me. The problem is, it's, just, um, it's hard for me to get myself to do that, because I don't enjoy it the time. And enjoying it makes a big difference. Yeah, Pokemon Go is pretty much the only mobile game I play anymore. I used to play more, but now I'm like, okay, I don't have time for it, sorry. I do still play Flight Rising, but that's a browser game, not a mobile one. So I can't play that out outside. But I do play Pokemon Go. That's my one mobile game. Because I have a ton invested in it. Like I got a bunch of, you know, nice shinies and stuff. I actually got a shiny Dunsparce yesterday. That was pretty cool. I like shiny Dunsparce. Yeah, same muscles. And yeah, I'm at, l at least lucky in that, like... I'm not in a rural area. I live in like a city area, so there are a ton of pokey stops and um, uh, gyms and all this other stuff like directly around me. I don't have to go very far to find all the stuff I would use to play the game. So that's that's handy. Heck, they finally added a whole bunch of roots, so I'm gonna have to try some more roots tomorrow. Yeah, it does suck that, like, if you're in a rural area, it's harder to play Pokemon Go because there's just less stuff around for you to be able to use. Yeah, I got a shiny Dunsparce! Just randomly, I was like, <gasps> yay! It's supposed to be the week where we're getting, like, a bunch of, you know, shiny fossil Pokemon because it's Adventure Week. I haven't gotten those yet, but I did get shiny Dunsparce. Which is pretty cool! I got some other, what, are some other, what are the good shinies I got recently? There were some other good ones. I did get a shiny Lucario, but not at the event. Just randomly I hatched a shiny Lucario. That was pretty cool. Let's see. And there was a bunch of other shinies I got recently. Like I got a, like two and one day ones. Well, grab your phone and play. If you're able to, just go outside. Uh oh. Can I script that one again? I did. I like finding the shinies, they're fun. I recently had like a, oh wow, 1445, cool. Oh, did you get the, oh, is it a, um, is it an Archeon? The, or the little uh, Archaeopteryx kind of Pokemon? I forget what they're called. I love those ones, they have such a great design. Maybe they're called Archaeops or something like that. I've gotten a couple of perfect stat things 
recently. I now have two perfect stat, um, what are they called? Throws. The fighting type sumo looking Pokemon. I'm like, why do I have two perfect stats of these? <laughs> what am I supposed to do with them? Um, I got a perfect stats Trico recently, so I can make a Septiceye out of that if I want to. Um. Okay, yeah, perfect stats Archaeops, that's really fun. I like Archaeops a lot. I gotta work more because I somehow, um, a while back I got a perfect stats Ho-Oh. So I'm trying to build that one up a bit more. But, of course, it's hard to get candy for legendaries, so, um, take me a bit. Ooh, shiny throw. Nice. I don't have any shiny throws. I, I have two perfect stats ones, but no shinies for that one. Oh, also, recently I hatched a shiny Bonsley. That was pretty neat. It's always fun to hatch shiny things. Okay. Oh, we gotta go add the acid in those things, too. Keep forgetting about the acid. I was mostly excited when I went to Germany because it finally enabled me to catch some regional Pokemon that I would not have caught otherwise. Like, I was able to get, um... Uh, sock, which is kind of the counterpoint to throw the other karate, you know, looking fighter type. So I got a sock in Germany. I hatched a, a mine junior, which I don't know how you would get otherwise, because that's another European exclusive one. And I got the um, the flamenco style, um, uh, orico, or Oricoro, I think that's how you, how you pronounce it. The the dancing bird one. The otherwise North American North American ones are just the cheerleader type. The um, blah, blah, blah. the European ones are the flamenco type. Does purifying boost their stats? I feel like it doesn't change their stats whenever I see that. Level 4 Gary. I would do that. Gyarados is a really good Pokemon. I see it frequently in fights. Oh, I do have, it's not the shiny one, but I have a perfect stats um, Dunsparce. That I've been using in um, battles. Let's see. It's a soft oil. Yeah, there's two. There's two other um, or Oricoros that I don't have. There's the like um, the ghosty type one and the um, the hula one. And I'm pretty sure you have to go to like Japan and Hawaii for those. It is unfair that there are still some Pokemon that are so region locked. Like literally. Like when am I ever gonna get a Tropius? When am I ever gonna get a Relicanth? Never! I know sometimes they have like safaris or whatever for that kind of stuff, but they've never they've never had a safari um, come to uh, Vancouver. Yeah, I, it's tough losing losing PvP battles. I try really hard on those because I really want the rare candy rewards, and those only happen if you win four out of five battles. I need to have a little starry things around here. Like, I think my average is usually like a... I'll win like either three out of five or two out of five battles most of the time. It's 
Park, please. Is that everything we have for this this part? Let's see. Turn around. Turn around. I think I have seen that pokey stop. Yes, that's very funny. Okay, I think this page is done. We are tearing through. How far are we on six? Open, please. I guess it takes forever for Photoshop to open these things. Oh, we didn't finish the stuff on this yet. You know what? Let's just go through since we're here. And uh, we'll take a little break to um, do the character bases. Get that all done. I think we got a few more pages to do that on. It'd be good to make progress on these. But good to know we can get through backgrounds pretty quickly. We already got through five pages. That's half of the backgrounds done already. Not bad. I think I was reading some article recently how there's like a spot in Poland where it's just like clogged up with pokey stops. There's like 100 all in one area because there weren't any like limits really on when you can add more. People would just add them all over the place. <laughs> they probably curb that by now. I like getting to have crazy um, movements with Eldritch Susie. Yeah, li li literally the reason why I decided to do an early morning um, stream today is because there's a um, community day for Pokemon Go, so I wanted to go out and do that in the afternoon. <laughs> so I'll do the stream now. I'll have to make my muffins at some point later. I'm also going to go out and catch Pokemon, and then I'm going to get me a... Um, boba tea, I think. I have watermelon now for summer, so I'm gonna get me some watermelon boba. Very good. Ooh, nice. Being able to add Pokestops is good. I should add roots. I should add a root that I go every morning so I can constantly be doing roots. Wait, really? Yeah, boba tea is so good. Why would okay? Why would they use the data to take away the stops? That doesn't make sense. Watermelon boba tea? Yeah, it's like a um, like they have all kinds of different flavors here, and at least for the place that's um, right by my house, um, watermelon they only have during the summer. It's a summer only flavor. So now that it's summer, I can have some watermelon milk tea boba with boba. You can also get it like in slush and uh, stuff like that, but I like the milk teas, so that's what I'm going to get. Especially on a kind of warm day like today. Yeah, I feel super lucky. There is a boba place that is literally a two minute walk from my apartment. I have to stop myself from going all the time. I'm like the boba, it's right there. I can just walk outside. There it is. I really like my location. It's so convenient. There are so many things I can just like walk to. I walk to coffee and a bunch of restaurants and car insurance and grocery store and pharmacy and post office and a walk-in clinic and a bank 
I can walk. To, I can literally walk to the mall if I want to. Um, I walked yesterday to the pet store to buy crickets for Alfie, so there was a Pokemon root on the way. Heck, like I needed to get a blood test once. And I was like, wait a minute, there's a blood test literally two minutes from me. I can just go and walk there. And it's super convenient. I know. <laughs> it's just like, that's the one problem with convenience. It's like, ah, oh, it's right there. I could just go and get myself a boba or a coffee. Oops, I'm out seven dollars. So I've, I've been pretty good about limiting myself so far. But it is really nice to have that convenience. Reasons why I don't particularly want to move away from the area. It's just super convenient. Also, like, again, the park is, like, immediately in the opposite direction. So is public transit. Ah, oh my goodness. Okay. My... Time has come up already. It snuck up on me. Sneaky. Probably get myself some orange juice now. Cause I gotta take my iron. But yeah, just. So I used to live in California, where I'd have to drive anywhere if I wanted to go anywhere. So moving here into like a city area, where like everything you really like. Like, I still have a car if I want to use it to go places. But I just don't use it that often because it's like, I don't have to. I can just walk to a lot of the things I need. And it's really convenient. And I like that. And if I need to go further, again, the public transit is like right there. So... Convenience. I used to, back when I was actually going into work instead of working from home, um, I wouldn't even drive to work. I would just take the public transit because it was honestly faster. And parking's usually limited at those places anyway. So I'm like, well, I can deal with traffic and parking, which is a pain in the butt. Or I can, you know, hop on this train and do whatever I want <laughs> while somebody else drives me to my location. Good public transit makes a difference. It also helps that, like, you know, the trains are pretty clean. They're on time. Like, you like you get a train, like, every two minutes. So it's not like, oh, no, I'm going to miss this. I have to wait another half hour. It's like, nope, trains, you missed the train. One will be along in a second. Ooh, croissants. Those are good. Yeah, Chris is like, oh, what are those two doing? They're being schmoopy with each other already. Also, Susie is totally taking the credit for it. Chris is like, I'm the one that commanded you to go over there and do the thing. Okay. Yeah, and like, a, this place can be sketchy. That's not the same thing as a, that. Okay, stretch. Ooh, gotta get lunch. All right, I'll be right back as well. I need to do one more stretch and grab my orange juice. And more water for that matter. Liquids, we need them.
And here we go. Let's continue. Just trying to get through all the rest of uh, these things. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like it. Chris is fun. I feel like there's so many different cool ways to interpret Chris. Perhaps by design. But yeah, I'm glad you like it. Thank you. Gonna have more Chris stuff in here. But first, we gotta get through all these characters with all them pointies. Hanging off of them. I guess after this we can get to the next background as well. Well, your antlers are too pointy again. I keep saying this every time, I'm like, ah, why are they making pointy? It's entirely my fault. No one to blame but me. Well, I didn't really add icicles onto her antlers this time. I guess I can go back and do that if I wanted to. Maybe they all shook off when she was running. They definitely seem like a weird kid. Even if they weren't uh, the only human in a town of monsters. Into weird goth stuff with the occult the interest. I have not thought about learning how to pop my joints out on command. I don't know if that's a skill I necessarily need or want. <laughs> not cross my mind. Maybe it would make me more flexible or something, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it depends on the joint. Definitely stand to be more flexible at least. Don't worry about that as we go. Also strength training. I need to do more weight lifting. I'm trying to do that a little bit more, but it's hard to keep up with. Drink my orange juice. I mentioned to do the color version of Noel for the character card and I haven't got a chance to do that yet. I've been so busy. And all the other characters too. Because a bunch of people that have been asking for like minor character size haven't been able to get to them yet. So I've been trying to do these. Um that sounds kind of terrifying. <laughs> Elbow's kind of important. You shouldn't dislocate that. My parents would probably scream too. <laughs> they screamed the time I got a ear piercing stuck in my ear. That was extremely unpleasant. Moral of the story, don't get your ears pierced in the mall at Claire, at the Claire's in the mall. They won't do a very good job.
Yeah, this, this looking at your elbow sounds like that actually hurt quite a bit, so... I'd avoid doing that. <laughs> Doesn't seem good. Are we at the bottom of this already? Okay. We're almost done with this part of page six. Claire victim. I am, yes. What happened was, um, so I got my ears pierced at Claire's. Again, don't do that. <laughs> Just avoid going to Claire's for your ear piercings. And, um, so I had the studs in, and you're supposed to keep the studs in for, like, a certain amount of time. Um, and then you take them out and start putting in regular earrings. I didn't even really want my ears pierced that much. My parents were like, you want to try it? You look nice with earrings. I'm like, okay, sure. And so I had the, I got my ears pierced and I had the studs in. And I was in the shower, uh, you know, kind of washing my hair, rubbing around my head. And I um, pushed my hand against my ear. And I was like, oh, wow, that hurt a little bit. And then I got out of the shower and I was like, touched my ear and I was like um where's my earring where's the stud and it had gotten pushed inside the cartilage in my ear it was on too tight and so it was inside my my earlobe basically like the the cartilage part and so <laughs> I called my parents and I was like mom dad my earring's stuck in my ear and they were like Ah! <laughs> and they were trying to, you know, push it back out because it was stuck in the ear. And I was like, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> like, I, I couldn't really see what was happening. I was just, I was just going, ow. And they could see what was happening. And it was like bleeding all over the place. And they were both like, ah, ah. <laughs> Like, they were way more upset than I was. <laughs> but they got it out eventually. It just hurt a lot. <laughs> and um, after that, I'm like, I don't want to put the studs back in. And they're like, you don't have to. So um, my, my the my cartilage grew back, and uh, I don't have ear my ears pierced anymore. And I never got them re pierced again. Thanks, Claire. Don't 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 get your ears pierced at Claire's. It's not good. It was stuck inside my ear. Like, li literally the flesh of my ear is really bad. <laughs> don't like it. And yeah, that's my best guess is that the stud was just in too tight, so any amount of pre too much pressure there, it's just like, whoop, just vanish. <laughs> I don't want to put the studs back in. So my parents are like, no, you don't have to. Yeah. No more ear piercings for me, which is, I guess, all well and good. I didn't really want them that bad anyway. I'm really bad at accessorizing and having any kind of jewelry. I have, like, nowhere to put it. So I just don't wear jewelry. I don't think much about it. Bad. That's, that's The problem is that carries over to, like, my character designs, too. Because, you know, a lot of char good character designs, you know, they have accessories and stuff like that. And, um... I forget to <laughs> add their accessories on, even if, like, you know, I'm following somebody else's design. Like, if they have really big earrings or a necklace or something, I'll just forget about it. So, uh, oops! I'm sorry, I probably would forget my jewelry anyway if I had the earrings. I'd say there isn't a lot of cute jewelry out there, but, um... I just don't focus on it enough to wear it, really. Plus, I feel like I would, I would just fiddle with it all the time if I had accessories on. Which may not be what I'm supposed to be doing with it.
Yeah, I like pens. I don't like losing pens, though. Like, I lost my Susie pen. I'm so sad. I'm glad I got all these other pens for my birthday. Like, I got sets two and three, so now I have, you know, Noelle and Birdly and the Sean and all the other characters. But now the only pen I'm missing is Susie, my favorite character. I need to, like, look on eBay or something and see if there's a singular Susie pen I can get without without the set, because otherwise I'd have to buy the set again. In which case, I would have three extra pins I didn't know what to do with. Okay. Uh-oh. just realized. Some broken spots here. Yeah. You would fi figure the point of rings is to fidget, but... Apparently not. Um, uh-oh. Where else did I... Where else is there a break? No breaks here. No breaks. Where is there a break? There can't be a break here. Where is it? Where is the break? Does that make sense? There's clearly a break in, in the thing here. Where is it? Where's the break? What am I not... What am I missing? Oh, there it is. It's in the hoof. It's in the hoof! No wonder I couldn't find it. Magic wand does not work unless you have a completely closed line. Gender shampoo? That's what Chris uses. Apple something. Okay, I think that's everything. I hope. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. I think I mentioned this somewhere. I started watching a Dead End Paranormal Park, and it's been really fun. Good show. Fun characters. More orange juice. Do backgrounds on this one. What? Phone is bloop blooping at me. Cool breeze scented. Flaming hot pizza flavor spray for the boys. Alright, and we'll get to all that stuff. Yeah, Dead End Paranormal Park's been really fun. I think I'm about halfway through it. I can't remember what the last episode I watched was. But I like all the characters. Courtney's hilarious. I like Barney. It's good stuff. Oh, I, I, the one I just finished, the episode I just finished is the one where... Um, uh, the 22 minute wait line where they're trying to go on the new ride and Barney's trying to talk to um, that guy he likes and so they keep possessing Barney in order to make him do that and it's not quite working I mean, I, I, I mean, I know, I know that the main character is trans, but I'm not super clear on who the antagonist is yet. Mostly, it seems like it's the the demon king guy. Like, Bar Bar Barney's not really a, a drag. He's he's a trans trans person. Yeah, it was a cute episode. Unless there's something I don't know yet. Barney's hair is very cute. Probably needs better hair dye though than, than a spray. Please go see a professional, Barney.
do all that shading around the city. Alright, <laughs> I will try and forget that. Yeah, I'm, I'm still getting through it. I was unspoiled on it. Other, like, the only thing I knew about it going was like, okay, I think the main character is trans and that's about it. Again, I like all the characters. I like Pugsley. I like uh, Courtney. Everybody's cool. Oh yeah, I've, I've definitely noticed that. That's kind of the whole, like, thing with Barney's character is him not wanting to go back to his family. Even though he probably should, because he can't live at an amusement park. Especially a demon-infested amusement park. <laughs> at the same time, you understand why he's reluctant to deal with that. I also like the episode where, um, you know, his little brother is there for a birthday party and it turns into Jurassic Park zombies. That was very funny. That's true. It seems like he should go home for his little brother, if nothing else. Since it seems like his little bro is like, hey, I really look up to you, and you left home, and that's hard. Be cool in some ways and less cool in others, I think. I mean, he was literally like, sure, I'll just bathe in a fountain outdoors. <laughs> that makes sense. Disney mansions. Oop, forgot about that one. Go back to that. Oh, and it was broken anyway, so we couldn't do it. It was borked. and acid and all that stuff. Hmm. At the very least, keeping uh, all the shading down to like um, a few colors makes it go faster. bathe in a public fountain. That doesn't seem like a very sanitary place to be. Hmm. Yeah, we missed that one over there, too. And some acid. Comes up an acid pool wherever you go. 
Um, let's see, are there any other acid pits? No. It's at least easier to work with in many respects. I like it. I like it when people do nice colors, though. I just don't have the time for it often. Or maybe I don't have the patience, and that's my problem. <laughs> I wish I had more patience. And you can try all kinds of palettes if you want. The nice thing about palettes is you're not bound by one or the other. For normal art. Oh. Yeah. And again, I wish I could do color more often, but it's just very time consuming, and especially if it's not your job. It's often time I cannot spare. So I like being able to do color comics for like, you know, short ones like I did with the deal with the devil and all that. But those are rarities, unfortunately. That's why I've been doing uh, these Elder Turn ones in like a limited grayish palette. It's a little something, but it's not taking up too much time. Especially since the designs and stuff are already pretty complicated. Mm -hmm. They've got too many pointies and long hair and all that stuff. Yeah, oh, those are so cool. I love the Spider-Verse artwork. Apparently they say sp the next part of Spider-Verse has been delayed, which I'm like, good. If it has to for the strikes, then so be it. And it better be just for the sake of the artists. Because they were like, oh yeah, we're going to have this out next year. And I'm like, no you're not. <laughs> not unless you don't treat the artist well. I don't like that. Please don't do that. Okay, I'll do a little bit more shading. I'm really pleased that these have been going pretty quick. Very pleased. Soft oil. Nope. Oh, is it my ad time already? It is. save and I'll do my stretches. Stretchy time! Here we go. Chris is still unamused. Yeah, time flies.
Oh, huh, interesting. I hadn't heard of that short. I would be curious to see that. Because that would be fun. And also probably a good example of cool stuff you can do with the medium. Please give me more Spider-Verse, but also take the time to do it right and pay the artist well. back for one more stretch. I am also back. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about that short. That looks interesting. Alrighty. A bit more shading. Around these here parts. Yes, you should see those movies. They're very good. Exceptionally well done. I just wish the artists had been given the time and money they need for it, too. Okay, is there anything else I'm missing in the backgrounds here? No, we're okay so far. Alright, on to page seven. This is a ten and a half page thing, so. Ah, oh, we need to do the characters here too. Can't remember. I, I know I like kind of them in the middle here, so. Character base comes first. Then we can do backgrounds. And yeah, there's the Miles Morales video game, which I've heard, I have heard is good. I haven't played any Spider-Man games myself. Sadly, sadly. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure the games are good. Word. Oh, pointy antlers again. Oh, pointy icicle hair. Yeah, we'll see if they ever do that. That would be neat. Will I watch 
watch some uh, interesting um, videos regarding that. I'm not sure if I can go back and look for them again. Ooh. Also trying to decide when I should stop today. Maybe around noonish, probably. That's my guess. Well, yeah, the, the thing with, with her being trans is that's kind of a subject of debate. That's not super confirmed. It is just guessed at, and at least specifically in the movies it's guessed at because of um, visual and storytelling cues. But it's not been stated outright. So we don't know for sure. Gossiping about all the latest horrors. Yeah. yeah. Also, you can you can tell this by off of his mom. Looks pretty Hispanic. That Spanish class joke was pretty funny, though. Four miles. Yeah, I, I imagine so. <laughs> I also imagine like what you're speaking at home is going to be very different from what you're learning in the classroom. something. Yeah, what's going on with our antlers? All of my Spanish classes I feel like were horribly cursed in high school. Teachers always ended up leaving for a big chunk of them for something or other. Well, I didn't learn that much. At least nothing that really stuck, unfortunately, because that would probably be a very useful language to know. Like, I got a little, I can kind of glean little bits of it here and there, but I couldn't speak it fluently if I tried. So, not the best. It sucks. I think you have to be, you have to be, you have to really luck out if you have, like, you know, Spanish or something in high school. You have to have a teacher that's really good with that. Because I feel like. High school is a hard place to learn another language. It's not a very conducive environment to maintaining that unless you're surrounded by people who are also speaking it already. And even then you kind of have to like relearn stuff. Like my parents have taken tons of German throughout the years. And even then when um, they were going back to Germany this year, um, that my mom was basically doing a Duolingo, li lingo, uh, whatever course on German, just to try and refresh on it. <laughs> you don't think it for a while; it kind of just falls out of your brain. Hmm. Oh no! 
feel like you're supposed to have those at home with you. Well, it's awkwardly here in this classroom. Like, well, uh, where'd our family go? This is like, why are you being schmoopy over there? We're elder chores. And yet you're being schmoopy. neat. One of those, uh, yeah, culturally sensitive, uh, readers kind of thing. Now, if only Disney hadn't tried to be like, we're going to trademark Day of the Dead. It's like, no, you're not. <laughs> you can't do that. Or copyright, whatever it is they wanted to do. Yeah, Coco's very good. Again, fun designs in that. I still haven't seen Soul. I haven't seen Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little scared to see Soul. I think it's gonna kind of break me a bit. <laughs> so I've just been uh, putting it off, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm sure that judge wasn't having a good time with that one. I don't know if it's about it being sad so much as like like personally affecting me in some ways about art and purpose in life and all that kind of stuff just from the description of it I was like oh this seems like it's gonna hit me really hard um and I put it off be a very sensitive topic for sure. So, again, my, my reasons for not watching it so far are probably nothing to do with the movie and entirely to do with me. <laughs> I'm not super excited about seeing Buzz Lightyear because people are like, eh, it's just okay. It's like, alright. Zootopia was fun because the world building and stuff was, was enjoyable. I don't know if the analogies worked one to one, but they're still enjoyable. Seems like it's the kind of world that you can tell a lot of different stories in. So I'm glad that they were uh, doing some like short series and stuff like that. Also, I haven't seen Elemental yet. <laughs> and I heard it's not that bad, at least not as bad as um, it looked at first, but I'm just like, okay, so I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> it's Arrow! Like, from the sounds of it, it sounds like it was kind of more, meant to be more like an immigrant story than like any kind of romance. Um, which is interesting. They really didn't advertise it that way at all. I 
Yeah, like he had Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. That's a real Buzz Lightyear there. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I really like turning red. Turning red is really good. That was enjoyable. I guess the next one they're doing is a, about a kid who becomes the ambassador for Earth to aliens. That could be cute. I forget the name of it though. But hey, they're doing stuff other than, you know, buddy movies. So that's always a good thing. I just enjoyed the, the friendships between all the, the girls in Turning Red. That felt very realistic to me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, okay, what, what is supposed to be Pixar for you then? I'm like, I don't know. They should be trying new things. I want them to do a horror movie. <laughs> How about that? Now, I'm sure there's probably like some pressure from a marketing standpoint. Like, no, you have to make a family friendly movie. It's all ages and it's a little bit comedic, but it's all heartfelt. And I'm like, that's fine. But it'd be cool if they did a horror movie. <laughs> I did see Strange World, and like, cool world building, it was just fine. Like, nothing really wrong with it, just nothing really like stood out for me. It was nice that they had like a queer protagonist and, you know, that was not, you know, shied away from it all, they talk about it a bit, but um, it's supposed to be kind of more like an environmental movie. And, um, and, and also about, you know, like, generational stress, I think. So, I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just don't know if it was very standout. Like, it was, it was fine. I'm really, I'm, it's hard, it's hard for me to pin down, like, okay, what element would have taken it from fine to great? I'm just not sure what that would have been. is a mystery. Oh yeah, this is a remix of Bad Apple and um, Battle Against a True Hero. Yeah, it's very much a family trouble kind of story, which a lot of stuff is coming out. I, gu I guess I will say the theme of Pixar lately is a generational trauma, which uh, huh, I wonder why that's coming up for directors nowadays. Hmm, huh. Hmm. Yeah, I really don't care about the live-action remakes at all. I just don't care. I'm gonna be pissed if they actually follow through on the Bambi remake, though. I'm like, no, don't do that to Bambi. Bambi is perfect as it is. I don't want your stupid live-action remakes for it. It's gonna be so bad if it's a live-action remake of Bambi. I don't know, it's gonna make me, make me mad. But I actually like Bambi now. Like, you know, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, Bambi's dumb and boring. And now that I'm, like, older and can appreciate it, I'm like, okay, Bambi is not... You probably couldn't make Bambi today because Bambi is not really a traditional, like, movie kind of thing. There's not really a big narrative to it. The whole point is, like, this is about a deer, and he grows up in a forest, and stuff happens to him. It's more like the atmosphere of, you know, the forest... And the feelings that comes from, you know, certain times of year and 
feelings of safety, feelings of danger. There's not really supposed to be a solid narrative to it. It's a bit more abstract. And I like that. I like the fact that it's like, no, there's not much happening. It's just about this deer in a forest. And, um, I don't think there's any way you could possibly change that without making it worse. And yeah, Lilo says, no, don't do that either. Ugh. It's gonna be so gross. I'm mad. I'm mad. I refuse to see the Lion King one because Lion King was formative to my childhood. And, uh, the live action remake looks so good. I, I can't even call them live action remakes. They're not live action remakes. They're still being done with animation, just C CG. Like, you're not using real animals for that. You made them up in the computer. It's not live action. Ugh. I'm gonna get angry. Yeah, the whole thing that makes Lilo and Stitch really stand out is that Chris Sanders has this really strong sense of design. He has very, like, you see how he draws characters. I'm like, oh, that's Chris Sanders' design. Chris Sanders worked on that. This is how he draws his characters. And you're gonna muddle that a bunch when you do CG. I don't want that. Nobody wants this. The sad thing is, I'm like, they're not even doing the movies that would actually benefit from live action. Like, uh, okay, a movie that would benefit from live action, probably Atlantis, The Lost Empire. It didn't do as strongly as it should have, even though it does have very strong designs in it. But that's the kind of movie that could have benefited from, like, one, a longer runtime, And two, would actually probably look pretty neat in live action. You could change that, you know, kind of, um, Mike Mignola Disney style around a bit and emphasize it in live action more and kind of give that movie a second breath of life because it really, you know, kind of got shafted. But that doesn't sell as well. Nobody knows what Atlantis is. We're just gonna do the popular stuff. But I'm sorry, I'm freaking mad about Bambi. It's like, oh, are you gonna make a live action remake of Fantasia too? defeat the purpose of animation as a medium. You jerks! <gasps> yeah, Atlantis, Atlantis is, like, I have a soft spot for Atlantis. I think it should have been longer. It feels like it was meant to be like a kind of a mini-series more than just a movie. But, um, it's got some really good music in it in certain parts. Yeah, you can see Chris Sanders' designs on How to Train Your Dragon, for example. At least with Toothless. That's a very Sanders design. Yeah, I like the hands they designed for Atlantis. Again, they kind of like took Mike Mignola, the Hellboy style, and kind of applied a Disney filter to it. So it's very angular. Probably looked very good with black shadows on it and all that kind of stuff. I like it when, um... Let's see, my nose juice. Yeah, I haven't seen the third How to Train Your Dragon movie either. But I like it when Disney, like, um, takes a designer that already exists and kind of adapts it for animation. Like, for example, Lilo and Stitch obviously Chris Sanders' designs. So those came through. Um, Atlantis, that was Mike Mignola's designs. So those came through in those designs. Um, Hercules was, um, uh, Gerard Scarf's designs. If you look those up, those are pretty cool. But those are applied, like, Disney sensibility to a pre-existing character designer. And those, I think, are always really cool. Instead, instead of just doing the traditional house Disney style, Disney house style, you try different things. They look cool. Oh lord, she coming! She coming for you, Chris! And it turns out the character based stuff takes a lot longer than the actual stuff. Beep beep, who's beep beeping outside? 
Who's beep beeping? Yeah, pretty much. Disney, Disney, uh, our Treasure Planet also got pretty shafted. They're like, we really want to make Treasure Planet? They're like, okay, we'll make us the other movies first. And I'm like, okay. Now can we make Treasure Planet? Okay, but we're not going to market it well. So, oh, so rough. So rough. Treasure Planet is very fun. Not all of the Disney movies back then were, were hits though. Like I saw Chicken Little. It's not very good. Movie tickets went up. No! What about the cheap movies? Chris is like, no! The movies! Yeah, I, I have seen it. It's just, it's not very good. They were clearly trying things with it, but like, um, the things they tried weren't super successful, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> oh no! You have little glasses and little hair and all that stuff. Funny thing is, is that, uh, oh, reload that. The funny thing is, is that, um, that, what, I don't remember what year it came out. That wasn't the first time that, um, Disney did Chicken Little. And he was a summoned in Kingdom Hearts 2 in order to promote the movie in Japan, which had yet to come out. So probably around, like, 2005 or so that it came out. But, um, that wasn't the first time that Disney had done Chicken Little um, as a story. The first time they did Chicken Little was as a World War II propaganda short. And the whole point was that it was supposed to be about, uh, you know, beware of misinformation, don't follow along with rumors and stuff like that. Because, uh, Literally, in the end, all everybody dies. <laughs> the fox eats all the chickens. <laughs> Foxy Loxy catches all the chickens and eats all of them. And they're like, yep, sorry. <laughs> this is what happens. <laughs> so, very different from the chicken little they did later. Though you can definitely tell that like one was designed for a different time than the other. And yeah, Stitch was a really good summon in Kingdom Hearts too. I used to have a box set of all the propaganda shorts, and I think I lost it. I'm not sure where it is anymore. Might be on here somewhere, but I can't find it. And yeah, it, it was um, it was new at the time in Japan, so they were trying to promote it in Japan. There is some good American animation coming out. Quite a bit. It's just a matter of finding it. Ad time again. It totally snuck up on me. Sheesh. We're almost done with this one, at least. Alright, time to um, stretch. Ranch. Oh, movies. Oh, stretchy, stretchy time. I 
still want to see Barbie. I haven't seen yet. And yeah, the new team and team movie looks pretty good too. Although what I am worried is now, of course, Mattel saw that success with Barbie and it's like, we're going to make a cinematic universe of toys. And it's like, no, you don't have to do that. That's not what we want. Stop. Like, we're gonna make a movie of Polly Pocket. I'm like, there's already a TV show of Polly Pocket. I worked on it for multiple seasons. It's pretty cute. Go watch the Polly Pocket cartoon. <laughs> and yeah, Coraline was good. Okay, so she is supposed to be like a spider creature. But yeah, Mattel, we don't need a cinematic Mattel universe. Please don't do that. Okay. And also, if you subscribe to the channel, you won't get ads. You'll be free of ads. And that would also be super cool. Alright. This is a stretch. I gotta do one more stretch, and I'll be right back. Well, yeah, I also need to see Ghostbusters. I haven't seen that. And all dogs go to heaven, which I have seen once, I think. Alright, I think we're gonna do, um... I'm gonna do one more session, and then we'll call it, because I gotta eat lunch and do a couple other things myself. But we made pretty good progress. We're on page seven. Seven out of eleven. Seven out of eleven. And, and for some reason, I remember watching like um. Why do I have stuff on her in this one? I remember watching All Dogs Go to Heaven like around Christmas time. It had like some funky flavored candy canes or something. Oh, okay. It's up to you entirely. You don't need a sub if you don't want to. But it would be cool if you did. That would make me happy. At least then you'd be free of the ads. But I also understand that you gotta spend your money where you want to. I wish I could stream more often, but oftentimes work gets in the way. Maybe whenever I get to that other project in the near, well not near future, in the distant future, I'll stream work on that more often. No, your thumb should not be burning like hot needles. Take a break, stretch, rest it. Should not be doing that. Those are very cute emotes, though. <laughs> I need more emotes, too. But the problem is, apparently, I need more subs in order to get more emotes. Oh, the drama. Like, I have a bunch of them pre-made, but, um... I can't use them yet. Yay! It's nice to make your own emotes. It's fun. So I've got 
got a bunch of them in the waiting waiting aside. Like I have a little good night Alfie's one. But I haven't been able to use it yet. Yeah, I need to customize channel points too. Oh that's cool. That's neato. Neato burrito. I kinda wonder if I had um if I've gotten the base done for um characters on page eight yet. I don't know. I hope so. I think so. Well, it's pretty just to a halt. Of course, when you eat a piece of cheese, people won't know about that unless they know the whole thing about I don't like cheese that much. I do gotta find a thing to do with channel points, though. Yeah, I don't know if I'll ever get to partner. I'm fine being affiliate for now. If I get to partner, that would be cool. But I don't know when that will happen. more as fine as it is. Okay. That one. Yeah, I just like streaming because it's fun. I like talking to people while I'm doing work. It kind of keeps me focused. I like being able to share stuff. And definitely sharing games has been fun. It makes me try new games that I might not try it. Eats a banana on a stream floor. <laughs> That's one million points. Let's see. I'll think of stuff though eventually. I'll think of it. I did want to do something for like bits as well. I think what to do for that. Wrong thing. Yeah, seriously, I'm like, I got all these games to play. At least playing them on stream helps me to stick with them a bit more. Let's see. I'm not sure how much we're doing. At least we're getting to the backgrounds of page seven. Ah, oh, FF10. I actually really like FF10. Even if tedious can be kind of annoying. I still enjoy it. It's one of the first Final Fantasies I played all the way through, and I think whatever one you play is your first often becomes one of your favorites. Um, I think I have to turn on sub-only mode. Basically. I don't know if it's something you can do otherwise. Like, I know everybody makes fun of, like, the fake laughing scene with Titus. But the whole point is that he is, he's fake laughing on purpose. Like, that's not what his laugh actually sounds like. He's doing it to be obnoxious and then they laugh because it sounds silly. Yeah, he's so headstrong. Like everybody's very, very serious about, you know, this thing going on because they're the only one, because Titus is the only one that doesn't know, like, what's going to happen to Yuna, Yuna and the fact that he is so gung-ho about everything is like, oh, we're going to have to kind of change our views on this a bit. I played that many Final Fantasies overall. I've played 9, 10, 12, 13, um, and a few of the side ones for 7. Like I, Well, I played most of um, Crisis Core, but I didn't finish it. 
I should play seven sometime. I played like I like the city. I played the city and uh, theater rhythm were both very fun because I like um, uh, rhythm games. Yeah, I did not win the first blitzball match. I was like, okay, I suck at blitzball, I guess. Everybody's kind of quietly disappointed. It's like one of the most stressful parts of the game. I was like, blitzball? Ah! What do I do for that? I actually did try um, uh, trying to get some of this, the... Oops, I missed Susie's tail there. Got to go back for that. Susie, your tail! Your floof of a tail! Hmm. I know usually the way I see people win that match is to kind of cheat and, like, scooch one of the players into, like, right by the goal and then just shoot one goal in there before the end. Like, I think that's probably a speed strat or something like that. Speed strats. Let's see. I'm sure it is possible to win. I've just uh, not done it myself. But yeah, I tried to get some of the, the secret, the, you know, ultimate weapons for characters. Oh, one, three, zero. Nice job. Like, I tried to get uh, Titus's final weapon. Could not get the Chocobo race. It was so frustrating. I got super close sometimes. But that Chocobo is impossible to steer! Ah! So I tried and tried. I did not get the Chocobo race. So I couldn't get Titus's weapon. I did somehow, some way, I don't know how, managed to get Lulu's ultimate weapon because I dodged 200 lightning bolts. It was kind of ridiculous. I think I didn't blink for like a few hours or something. I don't know how I managed that. It was ridiculous. Huh, interesting. I guess as long as you can time it right, then you can, um, just, oop, not like that. As long as you know where all the lightning only strikes, you can time it right and just avoid it. Uh-oh. Oh, the broken spot. And I'm trying to think of a, what a, I feel like I got like one or two other um, weapons. I might have been able to get Riku's. Did I? I'm trying to remember what you had to do for that one. I think you had to like fight some weird cactars or something like that. I'm going on a cactar finding mission. There's some other ones there. Yep. Nobody likes thunder planes. Or Thunder Hills, in the case of Paper Trail. And, uh, maybe I was able to get Auron's ultimate weapon, because his isn't that hard to get. Was it Kimari's? I think I got, like, three out of the seven ultimate weapons, and I can't remember which ones I got aside from Lulu's. And I know I spent all that time, uh, dodging Thunder- dodging lightning strikes and managed to get it for that. What were the other ones I got? It was a long time ago. Honestly, probably one of my... What game am I going to play after Ghost Trick? Um, I'm not sure. I'm thinking either Outer Wilds or Spirit Fair. Might be next. I still want to do Mother 3 and I want to do um, uh, Psychonauts 2 at some point. But I'm not sure what will be after Ghost Trick. So, yeah, I might do Spirit Fair next. Yeah, yeah, there's basically like, there's a weird thing in Besaid Island where if you talk to a dog, it will like 
give you another overdrive for Val for it. Just kind of like, there's one in its mouth. And surprise, you have another overdrive for, Mal for Val for. It's super useful. Extremely random. Because basically Valifor has kind of like two overdrives. You can have one that, you know, kind of is a spray that affects a lot of enemies. And then you can have one that is concentrates on one enemy. Yeah, there's not, there's not a super boss there. It's going to be hard to go back. Oh, where we get to Xenoblade? So long. Okay. Going back in here and adding all this stuff. We gotta add shadows into the characters too. Jack Black is in Psychonauts too. Good for him. I like seeing him like kind of randomly pop up in game stuff. DLC. Chris is like, ah. hold up there, partner. Whoa, horsey. See, I'm not sure it's after Ghost Trick. Probably Spirit Fair, though. I also want to do Monkey Island as well. Because I've never played Monkey Island. I want to do that one. Now there's remakes of it. Stardew Valley? Um, maybe. Could do, possibly do Stardew Valley. It wasn't high on my list, but I could give it a shot. Oh, that's fun. Man, for a moment I thought you said Rain World, and I'm like, I'd like to play Rain World, but I would suck at Rain World and it would drive me nuts. Rain World looks really difficult. No, don't get bit by a spider. Besides, it's not just any spider that will bite you. It has to be a radioactive spider. and um, Turns out, the problem is, usually uh, radioactivity just kills spiders. <laughs> Ra Rain World is a good game, but it is a punishing game. It is very unfair by design. Um, it is a kind of post-apocalyptic pixel little survivor where you're p playing as um, a slug cat in this strange post-apocalyptic world where um, it's called Rain World because every once in a while it just rains so hard that it will kill you. Yeah, like, Tr Tr Chernobyl is in, the, is in Ukraine. Um, but, um, no, Rain World's very good. The Rain World actually just came out with a bunch of DLCs. So you can try and play as a bunch of different slug cats. Um, but the whole deal with Rain World is, like, you're basically navigating this vast ecosystem with a bunch of creatures that, you know, will kill and eat you because that's just how animals work. And, um... You can just get unlucky and step into the next area, and there's like a big predator there waiting for you that you can't get away from quick enough. Or you could get caught, you know, unable to get to where you're able to go um, because, you know, there's a predator or something else is in the way. Um, and then if time runs out and you haven't gotten to shelter in time, then it rains on you and you die. <laughs> Very, very good soundtrack too. So many games, so little time. Like I don't know how you would possibly speed run Rain World, for example, because there's so much RNG involved in it. Just, you know, sometimes you'll come across a creature and it's like, I'm gonna get you, and other times the creature will be like, I don't care. 
I'm gonna fight this other creature instead. They all have their own little AI things. It's cool design. For sure. And also, I need to go back and fix that. Apparently, no, it's not what I wanted. I like watching speedruns. They're fun to watch, at least. Yeah, speedrunning RNG games sounds like it would be a really, really difficult. I'm beginning to add shadows because I forgot about those. What the heck happened there? Why did that happen? What got erased? Hello? Oh, it's not. It's Photoshop being stupid again. I hate it when that happens. Right, please. Let me actually use my dang thing. Let's see. Oh, shadows. We gotta do shadows. That's right. And I have not seen the Psychonauts analysis videos. Those are probably fun. Oh, it's so annoying when this does this. Like stop your schmoozing, your schmoopiness. Exactly. Join us, and you can get scary lizard GF. Here I come. Like sign me up. Oh yeah, that's an old that's an old meme. Okay, is that all for that? I think so. That looks fairly done. Hope I didn't miss anything. Probably might do some effects in that later. Let's see what we can do in page eight in the time we have. Oldie but goody meme. Oh good, I already did the things here. Yay, we're done with the um the other stuff. Can you get an up close and personal? Surprisingly hard to draw. I don't know what it is. We're just maybe because we're so used to just seeing like the two eyes thing. But it's tough. Yeah, that meme kind of popped up around the, the start of um, chapter two and it's stayed around since. <laughs> and that's pretty much what Delta Traveler is, is uh, that meme. As a game. Okay. Which I will play sometime, but I'm gonna wait for it to be finished. I'm gonna let you finish. I'm not sure where some of these go. Look 
fun. Yeah, I'll play it once it's finished. Same with all the other uh, band games. Though I imagine, I guess, Undertale Yellow is going to finish pretty soon. So, heck, that might be what I play next if that finishes in the next month or so. Finally play through all of that. Susie offers helpful advice. Yes, yes. The wall is much, much taller than Chris. Yeah, I guess the problem with fan games is that a lot of them are not finished because it is hard to do game programming. But it can't come out with too much. Okay. You can do it back there too. Blazing through. Oh no! I hate it when that happens. Forgot to close the thing. I just when I was almost done with it. Oh, I forgot to close that one too, apparently. scratching. It's like, whatever you're talking about, I got an itch. You got itchies. Actually, I'm not sure if there's any acid pits in this area or not. Do traditional? No, I mostly just only do digital. So that's what goes a little faster for me. Mm. There we go. That's why you gotta take breaks. You gotta do it. Protect your hand, protect your wrist. Don't do what I did. It's not fun. And this, <laughs> listen to my words. There are at least art programs you can get for free. I know there's lists out there for free art programs, because you shouldn't have to break your bank on that. Oh, is it ads time already? Well, let me at least finish this background, and then we'll call it a day, because I think we're close to finishing. Mm -hmm. I don't even think we have that much to do for it. Maybe just a couple of shading things. I've gotten through two thirds of it. That's pretty good. Three hours. Is Chris yelling at Noel? Um, no, no, they are not. They are trying to talk. Oh, sorry. Oh my god, ads. social skills. Wait for the ads to be done.
being a bit of a loner. Okay, um, we'll go back and uh, do these. Oh, right. It's all gone up. I gotta unselect. Um, no, no, Chris is not yelling at Noelle. They're pretty much like, hey, please don't eat me. I did that once, it sucked. Would not want to repeat. And then is offering, hey, you should come with me. But no, not yelling at Noelle. I feel like the ones with more po poor social skills are um, uh, Sorelli and Azlira. No, she, that's pretty much what she says. She's like, oh, I'm not going to. I don't like stuff stuck in my teeth. It's not fun. Susie's like, no, it's fun. You should try it. spots for shading I guess thank you I want to finish it already it's just taking so long but at least we're getting through the background pretty quickly I'm hoping I'll have this done by like say end of next week if I have the time to um, spend on it that I'll hopefully am hoping to have Oh, yeah. Let's see. Multiply. That. Maybe one more over here. And I don't see any acid pits to fill in, so that'll be done. Art just takes a while. That's just the way it is. And speaking of... I think that is it for this one. So I got about nine, ten, eleven, so about two and a half more pages to go, which is pretty good. Yay! Yep, yep. So, yay, we got quite a bit done, more than I was thinking we would. I'm also just blazing through the background as quick as I can. So, woohoo! We have made progress, but I'm gonna stop for now and get some lunch. Um, I'm not sure when the next stream will be. Um, maybe if I'm super lucky we can do a Tuesday night one, but it depends on how busy I am, and I'm guessing probably not, because I'm probably gonna be too busy dealing with work to do a Tuesday night stream. But if that's not the case, then there'll be another one on Friday night with more Ghost Trick. So yeah, do this, and I'll keep working on, working on this as well, and hopefully, I'll be done soon enough. But yeah, you all have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much for coming to the stream. I super duper appreciate it. I should actually probably post the ghost trick one from uh, Friday pretty soon. So yeah, thank you all. Hope you all have a wonderful day. And I will see you all next time. Alright, see you later.